What's good everyone, I'm Marcus, and today I'm reviewing the new for 22 Cambridge Twist Bar from Rep Fitness. This is one of Rep's new products being released this year, and I was curious about it for several reasons. I've used Swiss bars before, and it was always an interesting experience, but the biggest reason I decided to purchase one recently was to potentially help with my bench work without exacerbating my existing shoulder pain. I've used them in the past while healthy to get a greater range of motion and to stimulate the muscles differently. Last year around this time, I was actually able to bench 225 for four sets of three without issue or pain. Nowadays, I'm struggling with sets of 205 and even less. So I was curious about the Cambridge Swiss Bar when it was announced earlier this year, and I immediately put an order in it on release day. Now, there's always been a question about Swiss Bars allowing for a greater range of motion that can potentially exacerbate existing shoulder pain, but I decided to take a chance. And of course, I considered the Kabuki Cadillac Bar, which is known as one of the better Swiss Bars out there, but I didn't want to commit to spending that kind of money first without experiencing a Swiss Bar for a consistent amount of time. If you've watched my channel before, you'll know I'm a fan of reps, so their announcement of this bar intrigued me, and the price of $2.89 with included shipping was right for me. I've had about a month with the bar so far, and I've implemented it into my training routine as much as possible. I bench three times a week on my current program, and I try to use it one or two of those times. The bar ships in three pieces, the Cambridge black powder coated portion you see I'm gripping here, along with two hard chrome sleeves. It also includes the accessory screw and eyelet for use with the pulley system, such as their lat lower row. Now let me talk about specs for a bit. The bar was designed to weigh the standard 45 pounds and mine was almost spot on at 44.7. The camber depth is 2.5 inches and the overall length is 80.7 inches which is good for me here in this basement with low ceilings as I can stand it on end and perhaps store it vertically without it hitting the ceiling. The handle diameter is 35 millimeters and that is one of the biggest differences from a regular standard barbell which is roughly 29 millimeters. You can certainly feel the difference in your hand but it feels good to me. The max load is 810 pounds and the sleeve diameter is 50 millimeters. I will say that my rep fitness plates do seem to fit the bar a little snugger than they do on my other barbells. As stated the grip portion is a powder coated finish and the handles do have knurling. The knurling is not something you'd find on a top notch power bar as it is not an aggressive knurling but rather passive knurling. And that's okay though, because it is more than adequate and I've never once felt like gripping the bar was difficult. As previously mentioned, the sleeves are a hard chrome finish with welded sleeve collars. The nice thing is there's a good amount of length inside of those sleeve collars before getting to connect the points with the center handle portion, which means it will sit in the J cups of any rack without issue regardless of the width of your rack. The sleeves have welded caps that are stamped or laser cut with the rep name. There are three grips to choose from and I have used all three routinely. For bench I mostly use the middle grip and occasionally use the outer neutral grip. For bicep curls and skull crushes I've used the narrow grip which works well too. I've used this bar mostly for bench press but also tried RDLs, curls, overhead presses and skull crushes. I tried it along with my pulley system using the included eye bolt and it's fine but I already have a slew of different handles for that and I do not need any additional versatility from this Swiss bar so I won't use it with the lat low row on a regular basis. It's nice that they included the eye bolt for those that don't have a lot of handles but it also means extra weight that you'll have to account for on top of what you have on your pulley. I definitely think it's a cool feature to have included. Now the last design feature I'll mention is their use of round tubing. There are many Swiss bars on the market with flat tubing and it works but the choice of round tubing was a good decision in my opinion. When using a Swiss bar the biggest difference you'll experience is the additional stability requirements the varying grips have. With the extra challenge of stabilizing a Swiss bar the flat tubing can create some pinch points when coming into contact with your chest. Construction of the bar is solid and it feels like a quality piece despite no real improvements on the weld quality. This is one area that I hope Rep will work on improving as I feel this would advance their reputation amongst the major brands. Just because it's made overseas doesn't mean it should be expected to have sloppy wells and I think this is a real opportunity for Rep to increase their market share. As with all Swiss bars, this one definitely requires a solid and stable grip incorporating more of the wrist and forearm muscles into the process. Where you typically stack your joints from the wrist to the elbows with a regular barbell, there is a lot of potential for wrist movements with the Swiss bar and that can take some getting used to. There is a pendulum effect with the design of a Swiss bar and grip is not as straightforward as it would be with a standard bar so just keep that in mind. If a Swiss bar is new to you, that pendulum effect and additional effort required to stabilize it will make a Swiss bar feel heavier than a standard bar even though it may be at the standard 45 pounds as with this bar. Now as for feeling of the bar, I have to say this bar feels good to me. I appreciate the extra diameter tubing and the passive knurling is more than adequate. Fortunately for me, I have also noticed that my gamble with this bar to help my shoulder pain with bench has paid off. 
This bar has definitely helped me with my particular shoulder pain and I'm able to get in my three bench sessions a week without too much pain. That has also helped me in hopefully getting my bench numbers back to where they were. With my regular bar, the shoulder pain was such a distraction and deterrent that I no longer look forward to bench sessions. The extra range of motion at the bottom end on bench hasn't made things worse and I'm hopeful that helps strengthen my chest and shoulders over time. The other option you could incorporate into your training with this bar is to simulate bench with a block on your chest for a reduced range of motion simply by flipping the bar over. I've tried that as well and it's just as comfortable as the normal use and could potentially help individuals with pain at the bottom range of motion. Each individual's use may vary. For myself, I am now used to the perceived imbalance with the different grip of a Swiss bar and the chest sessions have gone well. Thankfully, this bar has made a nice difference for me in eliminating a lot of the pain through my sessions. I'm not saying it cured my issue or that it will fix your particular type of shoulder pain, just that it has had a positive effect on my shoulder pain, just as I had hoped for. For a while, I had to use my slingshot to help get through bench sessions, which I always feel is kind of a cheat, but without it, benching would have really killed my shoulder. Now I'm able to get through my sessions with this Cambridge Twist bar without the slingshot, and I'm able to recover faster so I couldn't be happier. Now for some reason shipping was delayed on my bar and I have no idea what happened but it is the first time that's happened with anything I've ordered from Rep and I'm happy to now have it. Assembly was so easy you don't even need to review the instructions as it's just two bolts and nuts on either side. One thing I will note to keep in mind when assembling is to keep the Rep names in mind. I made the mistake where one is upright and the other is upside down. I have yet to correct that though because depending on how I use the bar, one end is always correctly upright. I would suggest however setting up all three pieces in the correct orientation prior to bolting anything together just to avoid that mistake. So all in all, this Cambridge Swiss bar is a fantastic bar and it is not as expensive as some other Swiss bars. As in the case these days, equipment options are plentiful and the ranges of course run the gamut. You have plenty to choose from thankfully. In today's economy, we don't always have a choice and typically have to pay whatever ridiculous price a product costs, such as gas. I'm sure I would love the Cadillac bar as much as I love my Kabuki power bar behind me, but I'm glad this Rep Cambridge Swiss bar fits the bill adequately for me and at a much lower cost. If you're currently considering one or the other, I believe my man Flex Marks the Spot will have a comparison review out soon. But I'm sure some are considering it too, even though the price points are vastly different. For me personally, I'm always happy to save money and buy a cheaper option of something if it works for the intended purpose. In that regard, I'm grateful to Rep for producing the Swiss bar to give us all another viable option, and I do recommend this bar if you are in the market for one. I hope this review has helped any of you considering the purchase of a Cambridge Swiss bar and if you have any questions at all that I may not have already answered please drop them in the comment section below. As always thank you for watching and I'll catch you on the next one.